uh, uh, did this uh, measurement and okay. uh, they confirmed my prediction. Mm. Okay, okay. So that is also published? Less. That is also has appeared? It, it's the, uh, yeah, impress. Uh, mm. The uh, preprint is in the archive. Mm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have seen that. Okay. Neutron optical test yeah. for completeness of okay. root mean square. So, okay, so Dibhagata, I, I got the information that we are now live. It's only 10 five. Okay, okay, okay. So let me start in okay. introducing Professor Ojawa. So good morning to those from India and good afternoon to Professor Ojawa. I personally am very happy to get this opportunity to introduce Ojawa Sensei. He was my postdoc boss at Nagawa University, Japan. So it is indeed our great pleasure to have Professor Ojawa with us today. Professor Ojawa is currently a professor of mathematics, artificial intelligences, and data, data science at Chubu University at Nagoya in Japan. Before that, he was a professor at Nagoya University till 2018, I think. And he did his PhD in from Tokyo Tech in Tokyo, Japan in 1979. And he has been a visiting professor of many universities, including the Harvard University, Northwestern University, and Pavia University. And he did, Professor Ojawa is very well known and well recognized in the field of quantum foundations and quantum information theory, as we know. And uh, truly, he had made, he has made quite a number of pioneering contributions in quantum measurement theory. And he's best known for his uh, famous uncertainty, uh, universally valid uncertainty relation or uh, trade off relation, and you may say it's Ojawa relation. However, he has many other pioneering contributions in the quantum uh, set theory, quantum computing, quantum communications, and quantum cognitive process. And many of his professors have been, uh, been tested experimentally. Uh, he has published around 150 research articles in high ranked journals and in on wide ranges of topics. And he, has, he is a recipient of many awards, including the Mathematical Society of Japan Prize in 2008, International Quantum Communication Award in 2010, and the medal with the Parkman ribbon by Cabinet of Japan in 2015. And today it is our great opportunity to listen to him. And he will be talking about this uh, soundness and completeness of quantum root mean square errors an important topic in quantum measurement theory. I, I, with this, I would like to invite Ojawa Sensei to deliver his lecture. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Please share your slide. Okay. Yes, it's visible. Okay. Yeah, please make it full screen. There's a left side panel. You may. Oh. Give. Yeah. I don't know why. Just go for full screen, I think. Then it will. Be. Okay, okay. Just yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, it's already full screen. Yeah, it's it's gone. Yeah. No, no. It, it No, it was. Uh, Oh, okay, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Good, good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for introducing uh, my, myself. And uh, it's very uh, nice to uh, see uh, Alok again. And uh, I'm very much uh, thank for Alok and organizers uh, for inviting me to this uh, summer school. Uh, I am very uh, honored to give a talk about uh, uh, my recent work. Um, it's uh, uh, published in 2019. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, Soundness and the Completeness of Quantum Root Mean Square Errors. Uh, our project uh, pro problem is to extend the uh, 
notion of the classical root mean square error to quantum measurement. Because the classical root mean square error is a very standard uh, notion of the error for uh, classical uh, physical measurement. Uh, so we start with the definition of the classical root mean square error. Uh, if a quantity A is indirectly measured by measuring another quantity M, with a joint probability distribution mu AM of um, observable A, uh, no, a quantity A and the classical quantity N, the root mean square error uh, epsilon G of mu of the measurement of A is defined by uh, this uh, formula. Uh, this is just the... Uh, <clears throat> mean square of the difference uh, m minus a and making a root square root. So uh, this is root mean square of the difference of a and n. And uh, epsilon g, g is symbolized uh, uh, Gauss. Uh, this definition is uh, given by Gauss about 200 years ago. Um, but now uh, this is uh, very standard definition of the error for uh, classical measurement. And the very nice property of this uh, error measure is that uh, <clears throat> this measure is equal to zero. A root mean square error is equal to zero if and only if uh, M and A is equal with probability one. So this means that the measurement is accurate measurement uh, without any uh, error, error free measurement. Uh, so the, this is very a complete uh, characterization of measurement error. Uh, so we want to uh, generalize this notion to quantum measurement, so to obtain the very reliable notion of the error. Uh, in order to do that, we start with the, um, how to mathematically describe the quantum measurement. Uh, we start with the definition of the measuring process for the system described by H, uh, we define for four tuple, uh, K, C, U, and M, where uh, the uh, K is a Hilbert space modeling the state space of the probe. Uh, C is a unit vector of K modeling the initial state of the probe. U is a unitary on the tensor product space of H and K. So this is a, a system plus probe modeling the measuring interaction. And M is a self-agent operator on K. So the state space of probe, uh, this modeling the uh, meter observable in this probe. <laughs> we describe this uh, measuring process uh, in Heisenberg picture. Uh, so we consider that the uh, measurement start at time zero and end up at time tau. Uh, so in the Heisenberg picture, the measured observable uh, A is uh, denoted by A zero equal A tensor I. Uh, I, I means the identity and the B zero equal B tensor I. B is uh, any observable. We will consider the uh, joint measurement A and B or something like that. And M zero is I tensor M. M is a meter observable. And A tau is U dagger A zero U. A tau is a high level operator of the measured observable A just after the measurement. And B tau is also a U dagger B zero U. Uh, M tau is equal to uh, U dagger M zero U. Uh, this is very important uh, notion. Uh, M tau is a meta observable just after the measurement. Uh, we will um, measure this meta observable from outside of this uh, measuring apparatus and obtain the uh, outcome of this measurement. Uh, Graphically, the measuring process is described by this uh, scheme. Uh, so uh, this is the system to be measured. This is the probe 
And uh, uh, this is described by Hilbert space H, and this is described by Hilbert space K. And the initial state of this is, uh, for example, Psi. And the initial state of the probe is always uh, uh, prepared in a C, in a fixed state. And then um, this is uh, at time zero. Then uh, after time tau, uh, there is an interaction between system and the probe by described by unitary operator U. So the state changes from time to tau, time tau. Then uh, initial product state is uh, some time in some sense, entangled by this unitary operator. And then uh, after the interaction, uh, we measure uh, observable, meta-observable M in probe to obtain outcome um, X here. And then uh, conditional upon this outcome, we determine the state after the measurement. So we write this uh, row uh, conditional upon this uh, outcome of the measurement. So then uh, our problem is that the, what is the measurement uh, described by K, C, U, M of A in initial state of psi uh, considered accurate? Uh, our answer is that the joint probability distribution mu of m tau and a0 exists and uh, satisfies under this joint probability distribution. m tau is equal to a0 uh, with the probability one. So the, uh, this guarantees that the value of the outcome is equal to the value of uh, operator a at the time zero. We will uh, explain some mathematical background of this uh, definition. So we start with the uh, uh, state-dependent commutativity because uh, uh, state-dependent commutativity ensures that the, we have uh, joint probability distribution for uh, given um, observables. Uh, if you consider a state independently, uh, the existence of the joint probability in any state is equivalent to the commutativity of the two operators. However, uh, if you consider state dependently, uh, you need to uh, more uh, sophisticated definition for commutativity. So uh, by definition, we say that X and Y commute in state of Psi, if and only if F of X and G of Y are commuting on this uh, state uh, for any uh, polynomials, F, X, and G, Y. <clears throat> so uh, this is slightly sophisticated, but uh, uh, intuitively, uh, X and Y are commuting on this uh, vector, or uh, X and Y, operator X and Y are commuting on the subspace uh, generated by uh, Fx and Gx and Psi. So not all, so all the space, uh, but subspace. In some, some space generated by X, Y, and Psi. This is some mathematical intuitive meaning. Uh, so formally, you can write down in this way. And also we define uh, what is a joint probability distribution. A joint probability distribution of observables X and Y in state of Psi is a probability distribution uh, mu X, Y, Psi on uh, two-dimensional uh, subspace uh, such that uh, the classical uh, expectation of uh, f of x y uh, in this uh, joint probability distribution is equal to quantum mechanical uh, expectation uh, of this uh, polynomial for. So this uh, should satisfy for every polynomial. 
Uh, so definition of the uh, joint probability distribution is that the, this uh, uh, joint probability distribution uh, reproduce uh, the quantum mechanical uh, expectation for every uh, polynomial f of x, y in state psi by the classical expectation formula. Then uh, there is a uh, theorem uh, which states that the existence uh, of the joint probability distribution in this uh, sense is uh, logically equivalent with the uh, uh, com state dependent commutativity of A and B in state of psi. And this is also equivalent to the psi, state of psi is a superposition of a common eigenstate of A and B. That is, uh, psi is decomposed uh, into the uh, superposition of uh, joint uh, eigenstate of A and B with uh, arbitrary in pair of the eigenvalues. And uh, now we introduce another uh, kind of joint distribution. We define the joint, uh, weak joint distribution. Uh, we write new uh, A, B, Psi, X, Y of observables A, B in state Psi is defined by in this formula. This is very uh, simple formula. Uh, just we make a product of the, uh, this is the spectral projection of A uh, for uh, eigenvalue X, and this is spectral projection for Y, uh, uh, spectral projection of B for eigenvalue Y. So we, we consider this uh, inner product formula uh, defined uh, as a weak joint distribution. Uh, if uh, A and B commuting, uh, if A and B are commuting, this is a uh, uh, normal joint probability distribution. Uh, however, if A and B are not commuting, uh, this will not be a uh, probability distribution. This can be uh, negative, or this can be a complex value. <coughs> Uh, however, uh, the uh, very nice property of this is that uh, this weak joint distribution can be uh, measured by weak measurement and post selection. So in the sense, uh, this uh, definition is operationally accessible uh, definition. Uh, since uh, this quantity is equal to the uh, <coughs> weak value of uh, project spectral projection PBY uh, with the uh, initial uh, state of psi with the post selection uh, of measuring A of the 10 uh, outcome X. And times, this is weak value, weak value times um, ordinary volume probability uh, for observable A for value X. So of the good point of this weak joint distribution is that this joint distribution is uh, closely related to weak value. And since weak value and the bottom probability are operationally accessible, so this mathematical definition is also operationally accessible quantity. Now we introduce uh, somewhat uh, new uh, notion, which is not uh, usually described in uh, monograph or uh, textbook of quantum mechanics. So I introduced this notion in 2005. Uh, so by definition, A and B are perfectly correlated in state of psi, if and only if A and B are commuting in state psi, and then uh, we have the joint probability distribution. So this joint probability distribution satisfies uh, this formula. This means that joint distribution uh, concentrated on the uh, diagonal uh, part. So uh, off diagonal uh, <coughs> probability is always zero. So 
<clears throat> they have probability, positive probability only for uh, A and B, only for the case A and B has the same value. So th this is uh, just, uh, we can say that uh, A and B are equal in probability one. So the, this definition is, uh, can be summarized that uh, A and B are perfectly correlated in state of psi if and only uh, A and B are commuting in state of psi and A equal B with probability one mm, with respect to the joint probability distribution. Then uh, we have the following theorem. Uh, A and B are <coughs> perfectly correlated if and only if the <coughs> Weak joint probability distribution uh, has only a diagonal part. Uh, of a diagonal, weak joint probability distribution is always zero. And this is equal to the weak value of the uh, <coughs> spectral projection of B in, of Y uh, is uh, with the post selection A is X is uh, delta XY. It means that uh, weak value is of this spectral projection is uh, equal to zero or one uh, if and only if the post selected value of A is X then, right? Uh, so the, this also means that the weak value of the uh, B is equal to the uh, value of A post-selected uh, by uh, post-selection. Right? Uh, remark, the perfect correlation is experimentally accessible uh, because the, uh, this quantity or this quantity are operationally accessible quantity. Uh, so or the whether uh, A and B are perfectly correlated or not, can be determined by experiment. It's not uh, just a mathematical definition. And uh, another nice property of this uh, um, perfect correlation relation is that this is an uh, uh, <coughs> equivalence relation. And uh, in particular, uh, this relation is uh, a transitive. And so A and B are perfectly correlated in state psi and uh, B and C are perfectly correlated in state psi. Then uh, A and C are perfectly correlated. Now we uh, consider the uh, problem about how to define the uh, accurate measurement when the measurement is uh, accurate. <coughs> and state independent definition of accurate measurement is uh, very well known that because the, uh, every measurement has a P of M and then a state independent the accurate measurement is uh, uh, the measurement uh, such that the P of M of the measurement is equal to the spectral projection of the ob measured observable. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, uh, very common uh, notion of accurate measurement in the formulation of the state independent formulation. However, state dependent formulation of the accurate measurement are uh, not well known. Uh, so I propose the following definition using the uh, notion of the perfect correlation. A measuring process M, uh, KXCUM, accurately measures A in state of psi if and only if uh, A0 and M tau are perfectly correlated in initial state psi times tensor C. So this means that the Heisenberg operator A0 and Heisenberg operator M tau are uh, commuting in the initial uh, state of this uh, Heisenberg picture. And then A0 and M tau have uh, joint probability. 
And according to this joint probability, uh, we require that uh, A0 probability of A0 equal to M tau is equal to one, or A0 equal to M tau with probability one. So this is very much like the classical uh, definition of the accurate measurement. Uh, so uh, remark with that, the above condition is operationally accessible since it is equivalent to uh, this one, uh, the weak joint distribution of A0 and M tau uh, is uh, uh, concentrated on uh, diagonal or uh, some of the off diagonal terms uh, zero. So uh, according to this definition, the uh, very intuitive characterization of the accurate measurement is as follows. A measuring process, KXCUM, accurately measures A in state psi, if and only if the initial state of this Heisen picture uh, is a superposition of the joint eigenstate of A0 with eigenvalue x and M tau with the same eigenvalue of x. So, uh, and the coefficient is just the same as the uh, probability uh, uh, amplitude for uh, A has a value x. So, the, To summarize this condition is that the uh, measuring process M accurately measure A in state of psi if and only if the uh, initial uh, state of the composite system uh, of the system and probe is a uh, superposition of the uh, joint eigenstate with a common uh, eigenvalue of A0 and M tau. So only uh, this uh, common eigenstate is included in its initial state in uh, orthogonal decomposition. Now uh, we consider the uh, measurement uh, inaccuracy. So this is accurate measurement. Then we consider uh, how quantify inaccuracy of measurement. So uh, you know that to quantify inaccuracy of measurement, uh, our program is to uh, quantum mechanically generalize the classical root mean square error. So uh, you know that to uh, extend the uh, classical root mean square error, uh, it has been usually used uh, the noise operator based quantum root mean square, which is defined as follows. Uh, for any measuring process uh, KXC UM, the noise operator N of A for measuring A is defined by uh, N A is equal to. <coughs> Uh, Na is equal to uh, M tau minus A0. Because uh, uh, accurate measurement means that the value of those two operators has the same value. So the uh, error should be considered uh, uh, how large is this difference, right? Uh, then uh, the node operator based quantum root mean square error for measuring A in state of psi is defined by uh, this one, right? Uh, M tau minus A0. So this is a noise operator uh, applied to uh, this initial state and making the uh, norm. And this is uh, quantum mechanically the uh, squared mean. 
of this uh, noise operator in the state of Psi Tensaxi and taking rutamine. So scared me. So the, uh, this is just the root mean square uh, of uh, this uh, noise operator. So uh, noise operator based quantum root mean square is just the uh, root mean square of noise operator. And then uh, this uh, noise operator based root mean square uh, can be measured by weak measurement and post selection uh, by this formula. Uh, th this uh, quantity can be written in this way uh, using the real part of the joint, uh, real part of uh, weak joint distribution of M tau and A0. So uh, instead of the joint probability, you can use the real part of the uh, weak joint distri weak joint uh, distribution and making the uh, mean mean square of uh, a difference of m tau minus a. However, uh, this uh, uh, quantity is not uh, completely satisfiable. Uh, there's some uh, unsatisfied property here. Uh, so uh, we consider uh, what is a, a good uh, definition of quantum root mean square. Uh, we consider the following four requirements for uh, quantum generalization of classical root mean square. So first requirement is device independent definability. The error measure should be definable by the P of M of the measuring process, the observable to be measured, and the state of the object. The second requirement is correspondence principle. <clears throat> the error measure should be identical with the classical root mean square if the uh, joint probability distribution of M tau and A zero exist. Uh, so uh, if the uh, M tau and A zero are commuting uh, in the uh, initial state, then uh, they have the uh, joint probability distribution of them. Then the uh, quantum mechanical generalization of the classical root scale should equal um, to or should be identical with the classical root mean square, uh, which is defined by this joint probability distribution. Uh, because the classical joint probability uh, defines the uh, classical root mean square uh, uh, in this way, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the classical root mean square uh, can be defined uh, only by the joint probability distribution of A and B. So we, if you have the available joint probability distribution, you can apply the classical notion of the classical root mean square to this case. So uh, quantum mechanical generalization of classical root mean square should be equal to this original classical value. This is conservative extension or conservative generalization to quantum mechanics. <clears throat> now the third requirement is the soundness. The error measure should take the value zero for any accurate measurement. Uh, so this is sound because uh, uh, any accurate measurement um, is takes the error zero. And the completeness is the uh, converse part of this the completeness that the error measure should take the value zero if and only if, or only if the uh, measurement is accurate. Or uh, if the measurement is accurate, then uh, error measure should take the value zero. Now, uh, we shall show that the uh, 
Noise operator based uh, quantum root mean square satisfies uh, device independent definability, correspondence principle, and the soundness. So, this is a very nice uh, uh, notion, uh, which is uh, very reliable. However, it is not uh, complete. I will show that. So, uh, the Noise operator based quantum root mesquera uh, satisfies the device independent definability. Uh, in order to show that the P of M uh, of M, this measurement is uh, uh, <coughs> given by this formula. Uh, this is a spectral projection of the uh, meta observer at just after the measurement. And this is a partial uh, inner product. Then this is uh, operator on uh, uh, system Hilbert space. And this is a uh, P of M of this measurement. <clears throat> and this is equivalent to some uh, well-known partial trace uh, of the uh, spectral projection uh, with this uh, state of the probe. Uh, then uh, we define the moment operator of the P of M. Uh, nth moment of the P of M pi is uh, defined by this formula. Uh -huh. And if N is one, we call this the moment operator. If N is two, this is the second moment operator. Then a uh, noise operator uh, based quantum root mean square uh, satisfies the following uh, relation. Uh, so uh, this is real part of the uh, expectation of this uh, quantity. This is second moment minus uh, two times uh, first the times A <coughs> plus uh, A square. <coughs> So by, by this formula, the noise operator value uh, quantum root mean square uh, is determined by the P of M and the operator A and the state of psi. <clears throat> then uh, we can show that the noise operator- Oh yeah, I have a question. What? I have a question in the uh, go to the earlier slide. What's the question? Uh, and go to the earlier slide, I mean, last slide. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is moment operator of the P of M. How did you write it? Pi to the power n pi equal to this. Uh, Which one? Over here? A moment operator, how did you write it from this P of M? Because P of M is not a projector, so. This is the positive operator. Parameter. Yeah, yeah. So, so you the assume. Poster, hmm? this moment operator you assume. No, no, you define by this oh, formula. You, okay, okay, you, yeah. you can always uh, define the. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you, for your case, you need just n equal to 2. Hmm. This is not the spectral decomposition, but uh, this is just the definition of the new operator called the moment okay, operator okay, okay. from the POB, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This formula defines the positive operator, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the okay. important point is that the, uh, <clears throat> this is not a kind of the spectral decomposition. Yeah, not yeah. not a uniquely decomposed. Mm, mm, mm. Just we start with P of M, then we define. Uh, mm. Because the, uh, if you consider the out outcomes, and you statistically make the outcome, um, uh, for example, the mean of the outcome, mm -hmm. mean of the outcome is the uh, uh, expectation by the first moment of breath. And the second mean, uh, squared mean of the outcome is the uh, uh, expectation by the second moment operator. So the uh, statistical moment of the outcome of the measurement is the expectation value of the moment operator. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Now we consider the correspondence principle. The noise operator based quantum root mean square error uh, satisfies the correspondence principle. Uh, if uh, M tau and A0 commute in the initial state, then there exists a joint probability distribution. And then we have uh, this formula. Uh, because uh, in this case, there are <coughs> weak joint distribution is equal to the uh, joint probability distribution. Uh, so we can write down with this formula. This means that the <coughs> noise operator based uh, quantum root mean square equal to the classical uh, root mean square defined by uh, this joint probability uh, distribution. So uh, this uh, noise operator based quantum root mean square error satisfies the correspondence principle, which is the uh, uh, quantum mechanical generalization of the classical root mean square error. However, Note that any error notions having been proposed based on the distance between the probability distributions do not satisfy the correspondence principle. So those uh, definitions are not the uh, quantum mechanical generalization of uh, classical root mean scale. <clears throat> For example, uh, Wasserstein um, to distance is proposed to <coughs> define uh, the quantum mechanical root mean square, but uh, this uh, uh, quantity does not satisfy correspondence principle. So uh, in this uh, respect, the noise operator quantum root mean square is a more desirable generalization of the classical notion. The soundness. The noise operator based quantum root mean square error uh, satisfies the soundness condition. Soundness means that if the measurement is uh, accurate, then uh, error is zero. So uh, if measurement is accurate, then A0 and M tau are perfectly correlated in this initial state. Then uh, <coughs> by definition, a0 and M tau has a joint probability distribution as the joint probability distribution uh, concentrate on the diagonal means that the <coughs> off diagonal uh, probability is uh, zero. Then uh, using um, <coughs> this joint probability, we can calculate the <coughs> class, uh, quantum root of square law, uh, which is equal to the classical root mean square because they are commuting. Uh, so, uh, and by this uh, property, <coughs> this quantity is zero. So, uh, if the measurement is accurate, the uh, noise operator based uh, quantum root mean square is uh, equal to zero. Thus, we conclude that. The noise operator based quantum root mean square satisfies the device independent definability, the correspondence principle, and the soundness. Okay. <coughs> I will give some uh, counter example for, we, for which the uh, noise operator based quantum root mean square is not complete. It means that there is a cases in which the, um, the noise no, no operator based quantum root mean square is equal to zero, but uh, uh, measurement is not accurate. So this, uh, according to this counter example, uh, this error quantity is uh, not complete. Then uh, I will give a discussion uh, how to make this quantity to be complete, how to modify this quantity to be complete uh, root mean square. <clears throat> 
So uh, uh, our uh, proposal is the following: uh, locally uniform quantum root mean square. <coughs> so uh, for any t, we define uh, epsilon t a psi to be the uh, node by the base to quantum root mean square for the state instead of psi a state e i t a psi <clears throat> so we change the state by perturbation by this unit operator uh, so this we call the epsilon t then uh, we have give this quantity to arbitrary t then uh, we consider this uh, the maximum of those epsilon t to be the new uh, quantum generalization of the root mean square. We call this the locally uniform root mean square. It's defined by in this uh, <coughs> supremum of epsilon t of uh, all uh, t. So we, we make the supremum of uh, all the uh, old noise operator best root mean square, but uh, we changed the initial state in this way. So by changing the initial state, even if the uh, original root mean square is equal to zero, but uh, the, there's some hidden um, error uh, because the, in the case where the measurement is not accurate, but the original definition takes value zero, then uh, there is some error hidden um, in this uh, value zero. So such hidden value zero can be uh, <clears throat> manifest if you consider the uh, new input state slightly changing by this formula, then uh, this changing the input state uh, reveal the hidden um, error. And then the maximum of this hidden value uh, to be the uh, new definition of a uh, uh, local uniform root mean square. And uh, it is obvious that if you A and M0 is uh, commuting, uh, those uh, two quantities are equal. <clears throat> so uh, we have the foreign theorem. Uh, if A0 and M tau commuting initial state, then uh, locally uniform uh, root mean square is equal to the uh, noise operator based root mean square. And uh, <clears throat> locally uniform root mean square satisfies all the requirement uh, one to four. So uh, device independent definability and the correspondence principle and the soundness and the completeness. And the uh, new error is always uh, larger than or equal to the old error. Uh, so this is very nice because there are any uh, inequality in, for this uh, old error notions. For example, universally valid uh, error disturbance relation uh, holds for this error, also holds for new error. So we have <coughs> used the same uh, formula uh, for this uncertainty relation for this error. <coughs> and if the measurement is dichotomic measurement in the sense uh, A0 square and M tau square is equal to one, or uh, those two operators have the only the eigenvalue plus minus one, then uh, <coughs> new error is equal to uh, old error. Even if uh, A0 and M tau are not <coughs> commuting in this state. And also the new error also uh, shows that the uh, conventional uh, answer to relation um, is uh, violated if you use this new error. So the violation of the uh, Heisenberg's original uh, uncertainty relation for simultaneous measurement 
uh, is not due to the uh, incompleteness of the uh, node operator based uh, root mean square. Even you improve the definition of the error to be complete, still this uh, relation does not hold. So uh, we consider the following example. We want to measure uh, observable A with this matrix. <coughs> and uh, we very simple measuring process uh, without any uh, interaction, but uh, we measure uh, M instead of A. So the, in this case, the, uh, in the initial state of uh, Psi with this vector, uh, in this case, the POVM of this measurement is just the same as the spectral decomposition of this uh, operator M. Then we have the uh, noise operator based root mean square error is equal to zero because uh, the A psi minus M psi is uh, vector one one minus one one. So the <coughs> root mean square uh, is equal to zero. <clears throat> but the measurement is not accurate since A and pi are not identically distributed. <clears throat> because the uh, <clears throat> two operators to be the uh, perfectly correlated, it implies that they should have the identical distribution. However, in this case, there are <coughs> observable A and observable uh, P of M pi are not uh, identically distributed because the <coughs> probability of taking value two is uh, one half for this operator, but zero for this operator because this operator has eigenvalue uh, <coughs> plus minus uh, uh, zero or two, right? <coughs> oh, no, no, this is uh, what? Uh, <coughs> yeah, yes, it's, it's very complicated, but uh, this is uh, uh, sigma x plus uh, sigma z, right? Uh, so, uh, <coughs> It too is not eigenvalue. However, this uh, operator has uh, eigenvalue uh, zero and one, right? Uh, zero and two, and uh, with even probability. So uh, the <coughs> probability distribution of the uh, A and the probability distribution outcome is not equal. So though this measurement is never become uh, accurate. <coughs> Now we consider the uh, epsilon t. You part of the input state by exponential uh, i t a. Then uh, error can become uh, this quantity. <clears throat> uh, so if, if t is zero, the, the error is zero. But if t is not t, error becomes non-zero value. So the hidden um, <clears throat> error uh, is uh, revealed by this perturbation of initial state. Then uh, we make a maximum of this perturbation. We obtain the locally uniform uh, <coughs> root mean square to be two. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> this uh, value shows that the, this measurement is not accurate. Uh, so, uh, and also uh, this uh, new quantity is uh, complete. Uh, May I ask Good one more question? Good. Okay. <clears throat> so you introduce a new definition, new definition that whether they are accurate or not, which is the identically distributed, right? New definition, what? Uh, about the identically distributed or not. <clears throat> what is a new definition? I mean, the uh, I mean, you see that, but the measurement is not accurate. Accurate by, by oh, not okay, okay, accurate. okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, the definition is uh, for us. Uh, here, right? Mm. <coughs> Definition is here. In this case, the, uh, you have the uh, joint probability distribution uh, so, in this way, right? Mm, mm. In this case, in this case, the uh, marginal probability distribution equal. Yes. So the uh, yeah. 
So the logically accurate measurement is defined in this way, and this condition implies this condition implies the uh, distribution are identical. Okay, but uh, okay, okay. but in this case the distribution is not identical. not identical. So so this means that this measurement is not accurate. Yeah, thank you. It cannot thank be you. accurate, right? Okay. Mm, I got it. Yeah. <clears throat> right? Then uh, we consider the uh, simultaneous measurement. <clears throat> Let m k x t u m be a measuring process for any function a. Define the uh, <clears throat> Modification of the meta observable to be f of, f of <coughs> just, just on. Are you okay? Are you okay? Thank you. Uh, then uh, simultaneous measurement. <coughs> For A, B in Psi is defined as a pair of measuring process. Means that uh, <clears throat> the pair of measurement with the same meta observer, but <clears throat> a meta observer FM is considered to be outcome for A measurement, meta observer GM to be the outcome for the B measurement. So we can make a simultaneous measure by this process, just we modify the output FM and GM to obtain a measurement for A and a measurement for B. In this way, we define the, uh, what what mean by simultaneous measurement. So our definition is that a simultaneous measurement uh, for A, B in Psi is defined as a pair of measuring process with the same measuring process, just to modify output f of m and g of m. Then a simultaneous measurement f m g m for a b in c is accurate if and only uh, <coughs> modified output modified meta operator just after the measurement <coughs> is perfectly correlated with a zero and uh, modified. Uh, Output meta operator by G is uh, perfectly correlated with uh, either. In that case, we say that simultaneous measurement of A and B. In, oh no, th this is C. Uh, initial state is psi, so <clears throat> it's not accurate in, by this condition. <clears throat> so then. Uh, now we consider the inaccurate simultaneous measurement. Uh, so if you don't have this condition, uh, you can quanti quantitatively characterize how inaccurate the given simultaneous measurement is. So we do the following. <coughs> Uh, uncertainty relations for simultaneous measurements. By definition, the error uh, epsilon bar A comma epsilon bar B of a simultaneous measurement F of M, G of M for observable AB in state, this is psi, is defined by uh, epsilon bar A is equal to epsilon bar A psi F of M, right? And uh, epsilon bar B is uh, Epsilon bar B psi G of M. This is a uh, locally uniform root mean square for this measurement. Uh, this is also uh, <coughs> locally uniform uh, root mean square for <coughs> G, GM measurement for B. <coughs> then um, this is a uh, simultaneous measurement is accurate if and only if those errors are both uh, zero and zero, right? <clears throat> so the uh, accurate measurement is completely characterized by the, uh, this uh, local uniform uh, root mean square. And now we consider the uh, universe uncertainty relation. 
Uh, let CA be is a robot zone lower bound, then the following relation holds. Uh, epsilon bar A times epsilon bar B plus sigma B times sigma A plus sigma A times epsilon bar B is larger than or equal to CAB. Uh, this is uh, uh, <coughs> this form is a uh, uh, formula uh, I proposed in 2003. And uh, sigma B square times uh, epsilon bar A square plus sigma A square times uh, epsilon bar square, epsilon bar B square uh, plus two epsilon bar A, epsilon bar B times the square root uh, epsilon, sigma A squared sigma B squared minus CAB squared <coughs> is larger than or equal to C squared AB. <coughs> so this is the uh, two formulas holds, always holds for any AB and psi. And uh, this uh, formula is st stronger than uh, this formula. This is proposed by Branshaw in 2013. <coughs> so uh, the new, those formula is represented by uh, sound and complete uh, generalization of the classical root mean square. So uh, we have reached the very satisfiable and desirable uh, uncertainty relation for simultaneous measurement. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Yuva Sensei, for this nice and beautiful talk. Thank you. <laughs> there are a few questions, I think. <clears throat> May I read it for you? Hmm? The questions, there are questions. Should I read it for you? Yes, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Dipan Bhattabetal is asking that if AFX and GY initially commute, but why perhaps does not commute with other variable? Which, Where? Okay, let me read it. Uh, this one? Yeah, the, you can read the question there the, in Zoom. So it's a quite complicated. What is the question? Uh, 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 in the chat box. Chat box? Okay, I, 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 I shall read it for you once again. Uh, I can't see the chat box here, right? Just one. Yeah. Can I stop the this? Slide? Okay. 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 Yeah. What? Okay, chat box, right. Uh, if fx and gy initially commute, <coughs> but y doesn't commute with yeah, I mean this it's a student's question, so you have to formulate it. Uh, <coughs> what what fx and gy in initially commute. But the white pops don't commute with. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's asking that. Uh, maybe uh, he's asking that question also. That is, that if uh, maybe the, your, when the state is evolved, then how do your relations remain the same? I mean, remains uh, are holding. And the similar the kind of question he's asking. Too. You say that psi and then psi t evolve with the river i j a t. Then how this your relations is uh, remaining same? The, all the relations you formulated one two one two three four. Just a moment. That, uh, you are talking about uh, the definition of the local uniform error. Yeah. yeah. Can you see? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> did this? Yeah. By this, mm -hmm. 
ok. Yeah, this is the definition. We <coughs> we change the initial state psi mm -hmm. by this uh, unit operator. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we call epsilon t the noise operator based error for this input state, right? Mm -hmm. And then we consider uh, all t. Uh, then uh, they they vary its values according to t, and we consider the maximum value of those part of error, mm -hmm. and then we define this maximum to be the locally uniform root mean square. <coughs> so this this is a uh, uh, <coughs> This is less than or equal to the maximum of all input to state. We consider maximum or some uh, one yeah. parameter uh, family of input to state. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So then, so we we make this uh, new definition. Then sure. we consider uh, this case, right? Mm. <clears throat> so uh, this definition is that the. <clears throat> uh, you change input state only according to A, right? Mm. So, so this is untouched, right? And by this definition, you change the psi according to B, exponential I T B, and then making a supremum. So <clears throat> F M and G M are commuting, but they doesn't uh play any role of the definition of these errors because the size changed only by according to a and the psi here changed only according to b so what happens if if, if you consider a general observable some m some k i mean some 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 observable i mean your state is changed by uh, your generator is a here if you take something some a prime which is not commuting with A. So in such a case, what happens? If you change A? Yeah. Oh. I mean, if you are taking the evolution of A to the power I A T, if you take A to the power I A prime T, and A prime A has no, no, no relationship, commuting, anti-commuting, whatever it is. And then take the supremum of our a a prime and t. Yeah, if you you just measure the different observable with the same apparatus, right? No, I'm telling that your state is changing, not. Yeah. The, I mean, here the state is changing. It will i t a. I'm telling you, if you take the state, it will i t or some other observable, some 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 j. So a, a, a prime? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then uh, it's a very different quantity. Yeah. Then and then take the supremum over all a prime. Yeah, yeah. Or t. Or oh, t. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Then yes, you 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 want to change a to be yes. a prime different. Yeah, okay. No, I want to change a I, I want to keep a same and when the exponential I want to change say a as a prime. Oh, you change it here? Yeah. Ah, okay. <clears throat> That's uh, not good because uh, you lose this property. Yes. Hmm. So in such scenario, we can have a different uncertainty relation, right? Ah, I don't know. <clears throat> you need the, this relation because the original uncertainty relation is Proved by for this error notion, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if you have this relation, inequality doesn't change, but you replace this to here mm -hmm. because the lower bound of those quantities is the same. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> However, if the exponential 
A, it changes to A prime, mm -hmm. then uh, they don't have this property and this property. So those properties very much essentially depending on this uh, A and A are same. Mm -hmm. and so uh, <coughs> this is so very... Yeah, the relation four will remain same if you take the dichotomic observable. Is there any help, any any, any uh, result for this arbitrary cases, arbitrary a prime? Uh, di dichotomic case, uh, they 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 have some commutativity automatically. Mm. Mm. So this does not change the. <coughs> This quantity doesn't change. It is the dichotomic case. Uh, this is equal to for all t. Mm. So this is very uh, nice, nice definition, <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, if a and m, uh, a and m t commute, then. Uh, <coughs> This quantity is mm, same mm. without taking a supremum. Mm. Mm, mm. <coughs> also, you said one thing that is is a measurement is for the distance measure probability between two the, the distance between two probabilities. In that formulation, it it it, it does not uh, uh, fit. It, this formulation does not fit, right? Uh, it's the same because the uh, the disturbance is uh, uh, a kind of the error. Uh, the disturbance is usually defined to be the error of the repeated measurement. Mm -hmm. So if you make measurement A, then mm -hmm. after that you measure uh, B. Then in this case, there are, <coughs> you have the uh, joint P of M of the A measurement and the B measurement. And mm -hmm. uh, Disturbance is equal to the uh, error. Disturbance hmm. equal to the error of the B, B measurement after uh, A measurement. So the this uh, repeated measurement gives a uh, joint P of M. Joint P of M define the uh, joint errors, hmm. and the joint errors uh, have two kinds joint error for A and the joint, joint error for B. However, uh, joint error for B is, uh, by definition, equal to the disturbance of B. Yeah. So the okay. Okay. disturbance is a kind of kind of uh, error. Mm -hmm. So the, this formula uh, also holds for, for disturbance, eta B, mm -hmm. eta B here, and eta B here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understood. Thank you. And Dibanga raised the hand. Dibanga, hello, 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 Thank you for this. Uh, thank you very much for this talk. Uh, stimulating oh, talk. Okay, so I have to absorb a bit. But uh, just two, two quick questions. Uh, okay. The classical RMS error does not yeah. definition does not satisfy the criterion of soundness. That, that is the point you make. No, uh, that ex example you gave to make the point that uh, which one the soundness the, the soundness yes this example you gave okay, okay. So the uh, classical conference. rms so this is a fundamental argument for it, the deficiency of classical rms definition huh? because it does not satisfy if you define this way oh uh, the classical one yeah uh, classical one is the uh, complete pardon the, uh, here. Here, the classical uh, mean The problem with this definition, uh, you say it, it does not satisfy the soundness criteria. Right? So. Hello? Yes, uh, the, what was the question? The classical... Uh, the question uh, is that the, 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 the deficiency, the fundamental deficiency of that definition, classical root mean square, so yes. is it because it does not satisfy the soundness criteria? The soundness criterion, you said that the error should be zero if the measurement is accurate. 
Oh, no. The classical root mean square uh, satisfies all those uh, criteria. Criteria, yes. Because the, yes. this is the same as the case of the uh, uh -huh. A0 so, and the M tower yes. oh, okay. commuting. Yeah. So but, that the commuting case is the classical case, the equivalent. Yes. But yeah. but what is then the what one would say what is the fundamental problem with the classical root mean square error? Where what, what, what do you it? mean fundamental problem for the classical root mean square? Yeah. I think the classical root mean square is a very uh, satisfactory uh, quantity oh, oh. But without need, any. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But the quantum RMS error you say does not satisfy the completeness criteria. So yes, but the, that? but we have the uh, definition, improved Which definition, sense? satisfied all these four. Oh, okay. Yes. So that is the, your... Yes, yes the, all the definition, all the definition, uh, but all the definitions here, right? Mm -hmm. yes. This is, this is the uh, Device independently definable and the uh, correspondence principle satisfied and right. the soundness is satisfied. Exactly. However, uh, this definition does not satisfy completeness. completeness. But your definition. So, what makes your definition satisfy completeness? What is the. Can, can you explain that point? Um, the point is that the, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, too small. Okay. Uh, original definition. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, there are cases in which the uh, if A0 and M tower commuting, mm -hmm. then uh, this is very um, satisfactory. Because uh, uh, if A0 and M tower commuting, then uh, mm -hmm. this is just the equivalent with the classical root mean scalar. Okay. And the classical root mean scale satisfies soundness and completeness. Okay. So the, if the M tau and the A0 are commuting, this okay. uh, definition also complete. However, okay. if M tau and A0 are not commuting, okay. in that case, the <clears throat> if we consider uh, only this input state, uh, some errors are not um, revealed. Some mm. errors are hidden intuitively. Oh, but oh, uh, if you change the input state, uh, consider the, all the input state uh, mm. changed by this uh, unit operators, mm. then a hidden uh, error is revealed for some t. Oh. But by hidden error, do you mean the error hidden in the preparation of that state? Or what, what do you uh, mean? It's a very... <laughs> Uh, intuitive sense. Oh, I don't. Okay. I don't okay. know the uh, yeah. very yeah. mathematical. Okay. So, so Spanja, yeah, okay. but that is the point. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Mm. And according to this example, mm. uh, if you consider this input to state, right? Mm. Then uh, <coughs> you consider if you consider this state, you look at only this current vector. Okay. And the classical, uh, the original definition of node operator based root mean square is uh, a psi minus m psi, the okay. distance of a psi and the m psi. And the a psi is one one, m psi yeah. is also one one. So that you look at only this uh, column vector. Yeah, okay. You don't look at this uh, another column vector. Yeah. So the, but uh, this measurement is not accurate. So only first current vectors are the same, but the <coughs> measurement is not accurate because mm. there are some hidden error. And the hidden error will come from this the second current vector, difference of okay. the second current vector. Okay. And such a difference of the second current vector can be revealed mm -hmm. if you change psi by the uh, <coughs> unit evolution oh, of the okay. generated by A. Mm. So that's uh, that's where your definition goes beyond that earlier definition. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah. And in this case, uh, you obtain this uh, uh, sine curve. Okay. So the initial state, uh, the error is zero. If you part of the state, then the error becomes up and down. 
and the maximum is here. This is two, and the original value is zero. But the measurement is not accurate. The, that's the correct evaluation of the error is two here. And uh, <clears throat> this is, can be confirmed by uh, experiment by uh, Vienna uh, Technological University. <clears throat> so the experiment. So, so that is the experiment by Hasegawa. Yes, yes, yeah. And uh, Hasegawa and uh, Stefan Sponer. And then they did the measurement, confirm this, uh, uh, this particular cha cha change of the uh, okay. error according to change of the initial state. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. This is very interesting. So, Th thank you very much. Yeah. Can you is there any question? Any more questions? No. If not, I have one more ah, question. Okay. Is that in which sense you you mean that which which sense you are saying this device independent uh, things? In exactly. In, sense? What, in what sense you are using this device independent uh, in, uh, things? I mean, device independently, you uh, this is valid. Here. Uh, one uh, of your last uh, slide. Uh, the four conditions were there that has to be satisfied. I mean this. Soundness, completeness, and this one. Oh, this one? The co no. This one? Yeah. yeah. So it's a device independent definability. By ah, device okay. independent, so, what exactly you mean? Ah, okay. <laughs> <coughs> the, if you, originally the measurement is uh, defined by this uh, items. Measurement is uh, determined by these items. Mm. For for example, if you consider the coupling mm. and the, the strength of the coupling, and so uh, in order to uh, compute the m tau, you need uh, u tau, and if you have the uh, original description, then you need to, uh, the the type of interaction. Uh, U is equal to uh, uh, minus I T H over H bar. Uh, so the you don't need to, the error should not depend on those detail of the uh, detailed structure of the measurement. Rather, the error should be determined by output of the measurement. And the output of the measurement is statistically characterized by P of M. So the, this uh, uh, device independent definability is, uh, means that the error uh, is characterized by the statistical property of the output of the measurement and uh, related to the measured observable and the input state. So, okay, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but device independent property nowadays people are doing in the non-local scenarios that they don't use the property of the state, right? But your state is a commutative. I mean the eigen state of the observable A and M tau. It is defined, right? What? I mean the device independent scenario actually uh, implicitly means that there is no. Uh, no money. Uh, I mean, uh, people don't say about the state, what state people are using. Right. Oh, depends oh. on the state. Yeah, independent of the state. No, depends on the state. Yes, I mean, and that's why I'm, I, I am saying that your uh, whole formulation is state dependent. Yeah, state dependent. Then the, the error measure defined by, def, should be definable by P of M, observable, and the state. And the following formula, uh, it's uh, clear. Uh, <coughs> this formula. Yeah. This is a, a root mean square uh, noise operator based, but uh, mm -hmm. we we don't need uh, m tau, just uh, p of m and the moment operator p of m. And the moment operator p of m can be obtained by the uh, output 
So this is uh, determined by the uh, only by second, the mo statistics. second <clears throat> moment of output, and this is the first moment of output. So the uh, you this error is just uh, characterized by uh, output statistics in a given state of science. This is why the, you can make um, experimentally obtain this quantity. In that case, experimentally, you uh, collect the data about the uh, second yeah. moment of the output data and the first moment of output data in some uh, input state related to psi and A. Mm -hmm. This is called three-state method three to obtain um, this quantity. This is done by the Hasegawa's group uh, in nine, 2012. Yeah, that's yeah. so nature, nature PhD paper. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so the device, device independent uh, definability is very closely related to operationally accessibility. Okay. Experimentally uh, obtain uh, this quantity uh, mm, mm. by the output the statistics. Yeah, only from the output statistics you can. Determine. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. Okay. Thank there you for is listening. No more question, and I would like to thank you once again very much for the beautiful talk. It's excellent one. Mm -hmm. and uh, thank you, Masanao, very much. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Keep yourself safe and healthy in this yes. pandemic situations. Hmm? I mean, keep yourself healthy. I mean, I mean, healthy and thank safe. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. You too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, is there anyone? I mean, uh, um, uh, from the organizers, organizers. Putpal, you are here? Yes, sir. Uh, so, the uh, Utpal Rai and Dr. Utpal Rai from IIT, but now will be the next speaker, right? Yeah, yeah. Who will take care? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Manik is the chair, right? Sorry, what were you saying? Alpal. I was saying that uh, I should should I leave or uh, I mean Professor Panikar is not here, so maybe he is still in a meeting or I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he is still in the meeting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what should I do? I should quit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Let me check. Let me check. He is still not here. Speaker is still not here. Speaker is not here, right? But I saw Utpal. Next speaker is Utpal, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next speaker. Utpal was here. I mean, just a few moments before. So okay. Right see. now, he, I, I cannot see him. Though. Yeah, he's not here now. Okay, so uh, Avinas, you are Avinas, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am quitting now. Okay. Okay, okay. Sir. And I'll come back at three again when this Professor Lorenzo Macon will come. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, you, you have, came, have come back. Professor Panikai. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, Professor Masana Wajawa gave it a talk. It was seen very interesting and beautiful one. I cannot hear you. Maybe you are, you are muted. Your voice is portable, sir. Okay, sir, I'm quitting now.
Professor Zewa is here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.